while ago when Saddam Hussein was captured and was dug out of that pit. And there he was. What is the first thing they did to him? The first thing that we in pictures saw, that is. Um, they didn't stand him up against a wall like Ceausescu, or they didn't indict him, they didn't make grand statements. What they did was they devalued him. We, we saw close-ups of a man with an old grey beard and the dye running from his hair, and they probed into his mouth, inspected his teeth. There is, it was a quality quite consciously to demean this character. And that was a very powerful image. And I thought, let us start the play with that idea. So we have this sort of physical demeaning of both of them. And that was a, that was a piece, of, you know, a theme, a hammock on which to hang the structure of the play, the form of it. <coughs> the story of Macbeth at the gate is there they are in this limbo state. They're neither in heaven, they're neither in hell. And they are interrogated by this creature called Grey Malkin, who is a representative of that other world, the three sisters, the weird ones, the hags, the fiends. And it turns out there's a contest between Lady Macbeth and Macbeth to, to find out who was really to blame, whose fault was it? Did she encourage him? Would he have done this without her? Would she have found someone else to have done it with? Was ambition, naked ambition, uh, the element that drove them? If he wants to win this contest between them, the prize of which is heaven, uh, he will be free. If she wins, she will be free. He will go to hell. Here is a white feather. It is the symbol of truth. For a man to be without sin, then his heart will soar weightless. I will weigh in comparison the feather for truth, the heart for sin. Your heart does not skip, does not feel, does not gain. Your heart. What will you do with this eye? On the other, I will put the feather. If the feather outweigh the heart, you will see your boy again. If not, my scaly apes will have you again, and again, and again, for eternity. But the feather is weightless. The feather is truth. Why does he win? He wins because he makes a pact. He actually cheats in the contest, encouraged by the three weird sisters and by Grey Malkin, their fiend. Do you see my hand? You mean something from the sisters' corner? Of course I can. Can you, you see, see my hand? hand? Yes! Think, Macbeth. Can you see my hand? Cannot see your hand. Good. Can you see the scales? Think. Yes, I can. Excellent. Mark. Can you see that? The sign of truth outweighs your heart. You are free, Macbeth! And then it dawns on him what's happening. It says, am I going to go through all of eternity knowing I've cheated? And the idea of redemption, the idea of love, the idea that human beings can transcend anything. And he says, no, I will not do it. I will not cheat. So I command you to release her and condemn me to hell. And that's what happens. She is freed. 
he will spend the rest of eternity in hell. But not as a man, not as a man defeated, but a man who will fight, a warrior. She is gone and your sacrifice has been forgotten already. You are on your own now, King and Queen. You will be returned to a place that is doubly charged, doubly hot, doubly savage. My hounds and scaly apes are perched on snowy hillside, mouth sweating at the prospect of tearing your sinewy hide limb from limb. They know you are coming. Others have gathered to look on. Make it so, Cat. Know that if hell is full of men, I am no longer man. Call your hounds and your apes from the trees. Let them know that as I am torn to pieces, my smile will grow with every tomorrow and tomorrow. Double, double toil and shovel fire burn, cauldron bubble. Double, double toil and shovel fire burn, cauldron bubble. Double, double toil and shovel fire burn. And colder and bubble. Foolish love, Macbeth. Thank you.